Hello there. Welcome to yet another wonderful time with me, Bishop Mike Lachin, on Daily Words and Prayers. The Bible says it's of the mercies of the Lord that you are not consumed. The compassions of the Lord towards you shall never fail. Great will be his faithfulness towards you. And he declares, And because he lives, you will constantly live. Every program of death over your life and the lives of your loved ones, the God of heaven frustrates them. And I stand in the gap to say, the spirit and the power of death over your life is overthrown and destroyed in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. All that your hands are laid upon to do will have life. They will flourish, they will prosper, and the goodness of the Lord shall be your portion in the land of the living. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Welcome to yet another wonderful time with me on this wonderful day which the Lord has made. We've been talking about the power of words. The power of words. And today, by the strength of God's grace, I want to push it some more as we look into the power of words. All from the series Mind Mathics. Mind Mathics, which is the systematic relationship that exists between the informations we receive and our thought lives, our belief systems, our attitudes, and more so our actions. Words, words, words come as a result of the thoughts that we have up in our mind. Words are strong thoughts in the realms of the mind. When they are not spoken, they are known as thoughts. When they are spoken, they are called words. My God. And we looked so much into the word yesterday. And if you missed out on yesterday's message and teachings, you can go back and check it up in my YouTube channel, Bishop Mike Laju TV. You can subscribe and you will get all that you need to get. Pushing the mystery of words and the power behind words. We said very strongly yesterday that words are so powerful that they are God. Words are God's, for God is the word and the word is God. Our words establish our external realities. For everything that was created was created by God. And that God is the word. So everything you see in your realities and in your life is a function of spoken words of God's released and revealed over your life. So if you see what you do not like, rather than keeping quiet, you are to create what you want, just like the Lord did. In Genesis chapter number 1, reading from verse number 1, 2, down to 3, and the whole of Genesis 1, God began to put into the earth all he wanted the earth to have, based on the spoken word. And so also you can put into your own earth, into your own life, everything that your heart desires in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Today we look in some more to issues concerning words, the spoken word, the power behind words. And for a text, I love for us to go into the book of Matthew's gospel, reading from chapter 12, verse 33 on to 37. Scripture records, Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and its fruit corrupt. For the tree is known 
by his fruits. <laughs> o generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak, release words that are good? For out of the abundance of the heart, which is the mind, the mouth speaketh. A good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, bringeth forth good fruits. And an evil man, out of the evil treasure, bringeth forth evil fruits, that's evil things. But I say unto you, that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. I like verse 37. By thy word, thou shalt be justified, and by thy word, thou shalt be condemned. I'll take verse 37 again, Matthew chapter number 12, and read in verse number 37. By thy word, thou shalt be justified, and by thy word, Thou shalt be condemned. What a word. What a word. The next passage of scripture we'll be looking at is found in Luke's gospel chapter number 24 from verse number 5 through to 9. And as they were afraid and bowed out their faces on the earth, they said one unto them, Why seek ye the living? among the dead he is not here but is reason remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee saying the son of man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and the third day, it shall rise again. Ah, I like verse 9. It says, and they remembered his words. And they remembered his words. And the last passage of scripture I want us to read is found in the book of Psalms, chapter number 16, verse number 10. For thou shalt not live my soul in hell. Neither will thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. May the opening of my mouth be as the pen of a ready writer. And may the truth of God's word come precept upon precept, line upon line, as I bring forth God's word today. Hear this. Your words are powerful. They have what you call creative abilities. They are loaded with potentials. Because word is God. And God is word. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning. And without him was not anything made that was made. So the making of all things was by the power of the spoken word. The world that the Lord wanted to see and have, he created it by speaking it into being. So also you and I, who are gods upon the face of the earth, Men and women unto whom the word of the Lord has come. He says, you too carry within you the glory of I am. That enables you to be able to speak. And what you speak will find expression upon the face of the earth. Never forget this. Words are instruments of creation. Words are the instruments of creation. 
For I said this yesterday, the first reason for which the Lord used words was for creation. The second reason for which the Lord used words was for communication. Man who has not had a deep knowledge of spiritual experience and encounters use words only for communication. But men who have come of age, who have great encounters with God and in the spirit, know that the real essence for which words must be used should be for creation, creative purposes. So it means the world that you live in, you can turn it to be the way you want it by the power of the spoken word. Paul writing said, we have the spirit of faith. We have the spirit of faith. And because we have the spirit of faith, we believe, therefore we speak. So every spirit of faith is a speaking spirit. <laughs> Which also makes you and I a speaking spirit. Hear this and hear me well. Words are the programmers of our destinies. You program your world and your destiny by your word. You arrange your world by your mouth, by the things you say. That's why you must not be careless with your words. Never forget also, it is words that command results. It is words that command results. Words establishes our present realities. It is either you spoke the word into being or somebody spoke it into being in your life. So if what you're experiencing as a reality of life is not what you like, then it means you have to open your mouth and begin to speak into being a new reality based on the words that will come out of your mouth. If right now you have nothing, you can begin to have everything that your soul ever desires by speaking what you want. Somehow, men in trying to be sarcastic use words against themselves. Some persons in trying to be emotional and sentimental use words against themselves. Some persons in trying to seek for help from others use words against themselves. I find it very strange, but it's true. How people use words against themselves. Words like, who I be? Nothing good can come out of my life, Joe. Who does monkey banana? Referring themselves as a monkey that cannot find anything to eat. I don't think that anything good can come out of my life. I am just struggling. I am struggling. Life is hard for me. All these are negative words. The more you speak them, you command the result of what you are saying to manifest in your life. Never, never, ever use negative words against yourself because they are the commander of the results that you see they are the programmer of your destiny and above all they are the instruments of creation you create for yourself what your mouth utters that's why the bible always say let the weak say 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 I am strong. Let them not repeat 
the negativity of their experience and their feelings. Let them not say, I am weak. Let them say, I am strong. I'll not forget the story of a woman who died in a vehicle. They were on a journey. And somewhere along the line, the driver found himself almost having a head-on collision with another vehicle. And people were screaming in the vehicle. Somewhere along the line, the guy happened to by the mercies of God, find a way of escape. He swerved and he did not have that head on collision. But while people were shouting in the vehicle, this woman at the back shouted, Hey, I don't die. I don't die. I don't die. The vehicle didn't have the accident. People came out of the vehicle when the driver came to a stop. But this woman did not come out. And while they waited for her to come out and we had not seen her come out, they went to try to bring her out, only to notice that she had died. Her mouth killed her. Her mouth, her words killed her. Don't use negative words against your child, yourself or against your children. You speak against your own blood, your own flesh, and you say they are dumbs. They are blockheads. They are foolish. They are stupid. No. You create the reality you will eventually see by the words you speak. That's why ultimately they become dunces. They become blockheads. And they become foolish in life. That people did it over your life and spoke such words over your life should not mean and does not mean that you should begin to speak such words over your own children or over your own life. How can I forget the story of a woman married that had been looking for a child for a long time and she miraculously became pregnant after some 7 to 10 years of marriage. And they were glad that the child had finally come. One day, there was a little misunderstanding between the husband and the wife. I will not believe what came out of the woman's mouth. I am tired. I can't take this anymore. I can't take this. Even if this baby wants to go, let it go. I don't, I don't care anymore. I, I, I am tired. Never forget this. They resolved their misunderstandings. But the word spoken was no longer, was not resolved. It was not changed. The baby left. What they were waiting for, for about seven to ten years, just went away by the spoken word. What words are you speaking over your life? That is finding expressions in your life. I say it again. Words are instruments of creation, creating for yourself the world you find yourself living in. Words are the programmers of our destinies. And above all, words are the commanders of results, the very results that we see and experience upon the face of the earth. How do I know this? Even scripture declares it. In the book of Matthew's gospel, chapter number 8, you find the story of the centurion. The centurion. The Roman general. Whose servant was sick. Scripture says, He sent the elders of the land to go besiege Jesus. To come pray and heal his servant. And while Jesus was on his way, he sent yet another group of persons to say, please, he shouldn't come into his house, for he was not worthy to receive a man like Jesus. And these were his exact words. From where thou art, speak the word only. My servant will be healed. Speak the word only. 
For I'm a man under authority. I'm a man who have come to realize the power of words. For I have subordinate, I have soldiers under me. I say to one, go. And he goeth. And I say to another, come. And he cometh. So I know, Lord, that if you speak, this sickness will disappear and my, my servant will be healed. And scripture says he had not, Jesus declared he had not found such faith. No, not in Israel. He had not found it. A man who understood the mystery of I am. <laughs> A man who understood the power behind creative consciousness. A man who had the understanding of what words can do. It takes a man in authority to be able to do this. So please hear this. From that very hour, Jesus said, it is unto him according to his faith. The, the, the servant was healed. Why? Because he said, speak the word only. So by your spoken word, you can heal what the enemy has made to be sick. But the spoken word from your mouth, you can correct what has been spoiled. You can give an answer to that question by the spoken word. So therefore, I beg of you, words are spirits. You are a speaking spirit. Be careful what you speak. Reason being, Jesus declared, the words that I speak unto you are spirit and they are life. And this was what he said. If they are spirit and they are life, it means they operate from the realm of the unseen and make themselves to be known in the world of the seen. Spirits are not seen, but they ultimately manifest what they want to manifest. So when you speak words, you have spoken spirits. You have released spirits. And spirits have the capacity and the ability to create and to bring into existence the world of the seen from the world of the unseen things that have been commanded to be. I speak this to you by the word of the Lord. God's word will not return unto him void. It must accomplish the purpose for which he has released them. That's why the Bible says he collect those things that be not as though they were. They come into existence because he called them. They will not return unto him void. As he says it, so it will be accomplished. And I say you are also God upon the face of the earth. As you say it, so it shall come to be. The problem with the church, the problem with the church is that they look to God for everything. No, the Bible says the earnest expectations of the creature waited for the manifestations of the sons of God. Not of God anymore, but of the sons of God. For unto the sons has the God of heaven given power and authority to preside on his behalf and to be gods upon the face of the earth. Mm. I pray you come to terms and understanding with what I'm speaking about. So you can call into existence everything that your heart ever desires. Create it. You can say to one, go, and he goes. To one person, go, and he goes. To another person, come, and he comes. You can speak in the spirit and call spirits out of a place and cast them to other places because the power is in the spoken word. Scripture says, whatever you bind here on earth, by the spoken word shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose here on earth, by the spoken word shall be loosed in heaven. In interpreting it correctly, as it has been bound in heaven, so you have the power to bind it on earth. As it has been loosed in heaven, so you have the power to lose it on earth. <laughs> what is not in the heavenly realm is not supposed to be on your earthly realm. My God, my kushki palate. What's not in the heavens of your life should not be on the earth of your life. You have every authority to command things to be the way they ought to be. 
So if it is not working right, you can make them work right. Let's look at the text before us. Let's look at the text before us. Jesus was speaking even unto the people in Matthew's Gospel, chapter number 12, and he said, Every tree is known by its fruits. Every tree is recognized by its fruits. You either make the tree good and the fruit good, or you make the tree evil and the fruit will be evil. Which means it is the tree that produces the fruit. But never forget, it's the fruit that also produces the tree. <laughs> what a war, what a war. It is the tree that produces the fruit, and it is the fruit that produces the tree. For it says, How can you, being evil, speak good things? So, when you find a person that is evil, the kind of words that will come out of the mouth of that person will be evil. If you find a person that is good, the kind of words that will come out of that person will be good words. That's why the scripture says that out of the same river cannot come forth sweet and bitter water. No. It's either the water be sweet or the water be bitter. Which means out of a source you cannot find good and evil. No. It's either good or it's evil. So if indeed you are good within you, what words come out of your mouth? What fruits do you declare from your lips? For it's the fruit that you declare from your lips that will ultimately become the trees of your life that will bring forth fruits again. So if you find the kind of fruits that are around you and you discover that they are not good, it means you have not produced the thing that is good from your mouth. The way to change it is to change the fruit by changing the tree. How do you change the tree? You renew your mind and change the thoughts, the words in your mind. And then begin to speak no more negatively, begin to speak positively. And I'll express it. It says, for out of the abundance of the heart, which is the mind, the mouth speaketh. If you take a bottle of Coke and turn it upside down, what will come out of the bottle will be Coke, not Fanta. If you take a bottle of Fanta and turn it upside down, haven't opened it, what will come out of it will be Fanta. Which means it will be an error. Contrary to production, to have Fanta in a Coke bottle. No. It doesn't work that way. According to the fruit, so will the tree be. And according to the tree, so will the fruit be. Your realities is nothing but a direct product of your words. Or the words of somebody else over your life. And if you are silent over the evil things, the negative things, the contrary things, you'll find in your life, it means without speaking against them, you are in compliance, you are in acceptance, and you are in agreement. <laughs> For two cannot work together except they be in agreement. So if you are working with it and you are not saying anything against it, it means you are agreed to it. So if what you see in your life now, you are not in agreement to it, then it means you have to be speaking against it and creating for yourself something new. And it will not take time. That new thing shall find expression in your life in Jesus' mighty name. Hear this. It says, every idle word that comes out of your mouth, you shall give account of them before the Almighty God in the day of judgment. So don't be careless with words. All these jestings, unnecessary jestings, they call them comedy. Comedy. They crack jokes. 
I call them very expensive jokes, very stupid jokes, unholy jokes, unhealthy jokes about God, about the Holy Spirit, about the church, about pastors, about the things that are sacred. Comedians have become jesters using sacred things. To make jokes. And many of us that do not have understanding. Flow with them with so much joy and laughter. Bringing condemnations upon ourselves. It says every sin spoken by men. And blasphemy against even the son of man. Will be forgiven. But the sin against the Holy Spirit. The power behind the Godhead. The power behind creativity. Every sin spoken, every word spoken against the Holy Spirit shall not be forgiven. Even now or in the world to come. So be careful. Don't deny the power of the Spirit that's able to change situations and circumstances. Don't allow your circumstance and situation make you to be tongue-tied. Don't allow your experience to make you to feel that God is small and is a nobody. Don't allow your experiences of life that are evil make you feel and conclude that God is no longer God. For I hear people say, eh, where is God now in all of these things I'm going through? That you're going through it does not make God not to be God. He only says, if you have understanding to scripture, that God has released upon you the power to change your world by the spoken word. Was Jesus Christ not in a terrible situation at one time? When he found out that the storm was boisterous and it was against him, the boat in which he was sleeping was almost sinking. Did he not experience it? Did he curse God? Did he confess negatively? He only spoke to the disciples when they came to him and said, Where is your faith, O ye of little faith? He spoke to the wind, rebuked the wind, and calmed the sea. So by the spoken word, he took charge over the situation that he found himself in. So I speak this to you. By the spoken word, you can take charge of the situation that you find yourself in. You can handle it. He has given you the power to be able to do this. If you say to one, go, that one will go. If you say to another, come, that will come. So if you are experiencing a lifestyle that is not good, certain powers, certain personalities, certain spirits and persons are responsible. So when you begin to pray, begin to say, I command you to go. All you behind this evil circumstance, situations and conditions in my life, whether it be spirits or personalities, I command you to go in Jesus' name and they will go. They will go. And then you begin to call into existence and into your life the kind of things and the persons you want to find in your life. It's in your mouth. But you have to speak it and it will be yours. Look at what the Bible says in that same chapter 12, verse 37. It says, For by thy word, not another man's words, your own word, your own word thou shalt be justified and by your own word thy own word thou shalt be condemned so a devil means my condemnation is not from anybody my justification is not from anybody it's from me my word my word so if men condemn me and i don't want to be condemned I must speak words that will make me not to be condemned, but speak words that will justify me. The problem I find with many of us is 
when men condemn us, we join those men to condemn ourselves. They say you are not good and you also conclude with them to say you are not good. They say nothing good will happen to you and for you and you say yes, uh, nothing good really is happening and you don't know where things are going to come from that we change the situation. So you don't know where things are going to happen from. So really, what they have said is true. Nothing good will come out of your life. It's an error. Don't join men to destroy you. With your words, not their words, you shall be condemned or justified. So whoever curses you has cursed you with his own words. But you can turn the curse into a blessing with your words if you do not accept the curse that the person released over your life. Change it by your words. What does it mean to justify? To be justified means to be right. To be defended. To be favored, supported, and established. <laughs> Which means, if you are going through a condition in which you don't find defense, you don't find favor in your life, you can begin to bring it by your words. By saying, I am favored, I am favored, I am blessed, I am right, things are going well with me, I am established, I am supported, help is coming unto me now. And things will begin to be so by your words. To be condemned means to be doomed, to be damned, to go through unfavorable experiences, to be sentenced to punishments. So if you to find around you is a condition or an experience of condemnation in which things are not going well with you, in which it appears as being you are being punished for what you know nothing about, or you are going through unfavorable situations, or you've been doomed, condemned, you can turn it around by justifying yourself with your word. So it's not what men have said or are saying over your life that matters. It's what you say that matters. In Numbers chapter number 14 verse 28, this is the statement that the Lord declared. As truly as I live, saith the Lord, as he have spoken, as you, you have spoken in my ears, so will I do to you. Not what men spoke, but what you spoke. This is the story of the 12 spies coming out of the land of Canaan, the land flowing with milk and honey. And 10 were so negative. They saw themselves as grasshoppers. They saw themselves being unable to take the land. They saw themselves as nothing and nobodies. They use such derogative words against themselves, calling themselves grasshoppers. These were children of the Almighty God, whom God had given the land to by promise, whom God had been fighting for. They condemned themselves. They damned themselves. They made themselves to be unfavorable. And God said, As you have spoken in my ear, so be it unto you. And you know what? Even the others in the camp that did not go to spy the land, who believed their words and spoke also those same damnable words, condemned themselves. And God says, all of you are condemned and you will not enter into the land of promise. They all died in the wilderness. Why? Their words. The only two persons that entered into the land of promise and inherited their blessings were Joshua and Caleb who did not speak condemning themselves who did not speak unfavorable words who did not speak so negatively but men who spoke so powerfully and favorably they justified themselves by their words and they were able to take the land even though they didn't know how they were going to. 
Of the truth, they were giants. They didn't deny it. They were not in denial. But they knew that they served a God that was greater than the giants. And that's what I'm saying. They entered in and possessed the land and killed those giants. Why? Their words gave them victory. You might not know where the next breakthrough will come from. But if your words can declare it, it will be yours. You might not know where that husband will come from. If your words declare it, it will be yours. You might not know where that wife, that glory, those children will come from. You might not know where that next meal will come from. That breakthrough, that million, that billion, that contract, that job, that house, that land, that car. You might not know where they will come from, but call them into existence like God does. Calling those things that be not as though they were. Don't keep quiet anymore. And please, if you speak, don't speak against yourself. Don't condemn yourself. It will be an error. Don't condemn yourself. Rather, justify yourself by speaking right. And you will see favor come your way in Jesus' mighty name. I'd like to wrap this up by saying, in the book of Luke's gospel, chapter number 24, the disciples went to the sepulchre. When they heard that Jesus had risen. It was what was said to them by Mary. And when they came, they found the angel. Who said to them, why seek you the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. And this is what freaks me out. It says, remember how he spake unto you when he was in Galilee. Remember what he said to you. What were the things he said? Saying, the son of man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men. Number two, he will be crucified. But that's not where the story ends. Number three, on the third day, he will rise again. This was what Jesus said. And scripture says in verse 9, and they remembered his words. Which means, what became the reality of our Lord Jesus Christ were words that were spoken before they became a reality. He like foretold his future, saying, sinful men will lay hold on him. It was so. Sinful men will crucify him. It was so. But he didn't let the story end there. He said, but on the third day, I will rise again. And it was so. When he was saying it to them, they did not think anything good would come out of it. But when it happened and the angel told them, they remembered this word. Ah, Oluwao, somebody will remember your words. How you said, you are not small, but you are a multi-millionaire. How you say consistently that greatness is your portion. How with your mouth you say you are blessed and not cursed. They will remember your word. And you too will remember your word. So be careful how you use your word. Don't use it negatively. You prophesy over your tomorrow by the things you say in your today with your mouth. Be careful not to use your words negatively. And to this end, we are told in scripture that Jesus said, Thou, O Lord, shalt not leave my soul in hell. Neither will thou suffer thy holy one to see corruption. He never saw corruption. His soul was not left in hell because he spoke it. He spoke it. So today I'm asking, what are you speaking with your mouth? I wrap this broadcast up today with this powerful scripture, which is found in the book of Proverbs chapter number 18, verse number 20. It says, a man's belly, a man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. And with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. What's the belly of a man? It's like the tank, the reservoir, the container, the store, the bank accounts of the man. Where he stores what he takes in. It says, a man's belly shall be filled, shall be filled shall be satisfied, shall be established, not by what he eats, 
but by the fruit of his mouth. The fruit of his mouth is what he says. And then he says, and with the increase of his lips, if he keeps on increasing what he is saying, if he keeps on saying all the things he is saying and never gives up saying them and never stops saying them, he says, he shall be filled yet some more. Which means, what will fill you financially? What will fill you in reality? What will fill your marriage? What will fill your business? What will fill your life? And make you satisfied as you should be satisfied at the words that proceeds from your mouth. I bless you today and I decree from today your words will be good. For if you make your word good, you will experience a life that is good. But if your words be bad, you will experience a life that is bad. So from today, May your words be good so that you will see good in life like never before in Jesus' name. I bless you and I decree you are blessed. You are not cursed. You are blessed. You are the head and not the tail. Say it with me. I am the head and not the tail. I am blessed and not cursed. I'm above only I'm not beneath. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I'll dwell in the house of the Lord. I am not sick. I am well. I am not oppressed. I am liberated and delivered. I am a success upon the face of the earth. I am victory going to happen. I'm a multi-billionaire. I am blessed on every side. It is well with my soul and with my family, my wife, my husband, my children. Everything about me is blessed and that which I lay my hands upon to do is also blessed as your mouth have declared it so it will be for you in Jesus mighty name I speak this till I come your way tomorrow by 12 every day for you will be a plus and not a minus in Jesus name press the like button and also share this message with somebody and God will bless you you can go also to the YouTube channel Bishop Mike Lachin subscribe and you get all our posts. God honor and keep you. And be rapturable in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.